We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's episode of The Spicy Life, we are getting hot and heavy. And ladies, I'm taking great care of you because we are doing the five things that men think are sexy. And so to help me with these answers and reveal to you this phenomenal truth that I know is going to blow your mind, I have DJ Damage, representing from the East Coast, Philly, radio personality and host of Hollywood Unlocked. We also got Jado, representing for the West Coast, Inglewood. And he is a three-time Grammy-nominated artist, songwriter, producer, and self-proclaimed love relationship guru by the alias of Dr. Trill. So you know I'm going to get on him or later because he's talking about he's a relationship expert over here. And then we got DJ Head from the West Coast, repping Carson. <laughs> Radio and TV personality. And you know what? We already know Head is going to come with that fire. So, fellas. And I don't have on no pants on Zoom. He has no pants on. (laughs) He's trying to get that sex appeal already started for you, ladies. And we also have Isaac Keys represented from the South, St. Louis, Missouri. Isaac Keys is a former NFL player turned actor. So, you guys already know he's going to keep it 100 with that soft southern approach. It's about to be just that dirty, dirty. So I gathered this group of guys together because I really wanted a conversation on one thing that women always ask me about is sex appeal, flirtation. How do we get the guy to want us? How do we get his attention? And you guys know that I have a master's in communication. And so I'm always giving the scientific and, you know, background research on what I've studied. And I want to now hear from some real fellas from all over the U.S., to chime in on if these studies are true, if this research, the evidence is clear, and if you guys have these experiences. So before I get into like some deep, deep questions, because I'm going to go in on you guys, Mm -hmm. I want to warm you guys up with each telling me when you first fell in love with yourselves. So you just, all you have to do is just give me what moment in time did you say, I'm that man, I got this swag for days. When did you fall in love with yourself? Jado, you're going to start. Oh, I would love, I would love to start. I would probably say I, Fell in love with myself probably around 25. Like before, I was, I think I was going along with emotions and responding to everybody else's love and being mm-hmm. like excited that other people found something to love within me. But growing up and growing into the space of actually being like, yo, I have something to offer, it didn't mm-hmm. probably didn't happen until 25. I love that. Okay, Damage, you gonna give us when you fall in love with yourself. Yeah, man, piggybacking off of Jado, I think it was more recent for me. I would say around 28, where I finally felt like I was becoming a man and knew I had something to offer to a relationship and kind of knew my positive attributes. I think before, just piggybacking off of Jado said, I was kind of just like, oh, okay, people find me attractive, blah, blah, blah. But now I feel like around 27, 28, I actually knew for sure what I could bring to somebody's life in a relationship. Love it. Okay. Head, when did you fall in love with yourself? Um, Probably like when I was about two years old. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> go, go ahead, Head. You know what I'm saying? I, I, my mom told me that I was advanced and um, I started talking early. Obviously, you know, I started talking shit real early. And then um, she said after I was potty trained, I never peed in the bed, you know, but I had like cousins that was like nine, 10 years old. And they was weird because they was always peeing on themselves and shit. And so, like, you know, just I felt like two years old was a good number for me. And then I had a spiritual enlightenment when I was 27, if, mm. if we be more realistic, where uh, I felt like I, I came into my own and I was like the person I wanted to be on the inside. I mm. love that. Thank you for adding that substance in their head. We appreciate mm. that. <laughs> Isaac, when did you fall in love with yourself? Uh, I would like to say I think probably right around 21. Um and it, was, it had nothing to do with the alcohol that I was consuming because I was 21. <laughs> <laughs> More or less the time frame when um, I learned what confidence can do. Mm-hmm. And I learned that if you really believe in yourself and the confidence that you can, you, you can achieve more that way just by the thoughts. And I think that was the first time I realized, like, okay, I look at what I was doing. I was, like, right into college trying to figure out what the hell I was getting ready to do in my life. Football was coming into the play, but wasn't necessarily, you know, it was going to be there to go professionally. But being around other people from other schools, I went to HBCU, but being around other athletes, I learned that like there could be a bigger schools from Clemson, yeah. Nebraska, Ohio State, and I went to a smaller school, but training with them allowed me to realize that just having that confidence, I can achieve just the same thing that they're doing or, or more. So I think confidence played a major part in that. 
I love that. No. I love that. Okay. So thank you guys for opening your hearts and minds to us. Uh, all of the ladies, I'm sure are going to appreciate it. I know I do because it's important for us to hear you guys also pump yourselves up, right? Us, the media freaking our friends, we're always telling each other, you know, we're reading every book for self-help and self-care when it comes to giving ourselves as women affirmations. It's nice to know that the men love on themselves as well. Cause you guys are essentially preparing yourselves for us and for partnership. So to dive into our conversation about relationships, dating and love, everything sex on the spicy life, we're going to start off with me telling you, and I want to hear your ideas about this, right? These are the five things that studies say makes sex appeal, right? We all know that as women, we want this. We want you guys to desire us, but I want your input on number one, dynamic attractiveness. Hmm. This is when uh, a woman is naturally uh, positive. She has a smile on her face. She's upbeat. She's expressive. She's giving facial expressions saying, come over here. I'm open to receiving you. How do you guys feel about that? Anyone can chime in. It's a must. I feel like that's, it's a must. I feel like on that aspect, that means it shows to me going back to confidence that she's confident within herself. So she's able to do those things if it's real. Uh, you understand sometimes it can come off a little corny, come off a little fake, depending on what that may be, if you saw my facial expressions and her interaction. But if she's confident within herself, I think she's going to try to be genuine with who she is. And I think that's that's important for me. Or you said dynamic attractiveness, is that what yep, you call it? Yep, that's what it's called, dynamic attractiveness. It's not and necessarily the exterior is like phenomenal, but her energy, her vibrance is. Energy is big now for me. Jada, what were you about to yeah. say? I was about to say I agree with him 100%. It is definitely a must because most of the opportunities will be passed over if the woman doesn't engage with you with her eyes or you know show you that she's interested in you coming over because a lot of times most times women go out with other women with their home girls and you don't necessarily feel welcome to just walk into a group of women and just pick one out and take one so if that girl does not make any type of connection with you communicating that is a good idea for you to come over there and do it just walk out you know See? I like that, but I also like a woman that know how to put the guard up a little bit. I don't want a happy-go-lucky, smiling in every <laughs> my face type of woman. I'm, and maybe that might be the North Philly in me, but that's that Philly. <laughs> sometimes I'm attracted like, to a girl that kind of got that stone cold look. Not saying towards me, but like you know, not everybody that walks up to her, she's just like, hey, hi. you know, that's that's too much. I don't want my my girlfriend <laughs> to be. Or anybody I'm talking to to be so happy go lucky and just smiling in every guy's face where he feel like he can kind of grab her fingertips a little bit in the conversation. I don't like that. So I, I'm with it, but like I'm 50, 50 on it. Damn it, you know I have to touch on what you're saying right now because uh, you know my education kicks in, and what you're re what you're referencing right now is the dynamic attractiveness, making herself approachable to other men when women actually do smile more or they are open to all kinds of people whether it's men or women they're just an open person men are more intimidated by that because they don't want other people accessible to you so if a woman wants to keep her man just feeling a slight hint of jealousy i suggest that she always is friendly and approachable mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that she needs to be <laughs> talking mm -hmm. to these fellas <laughs> but when a man isn't afraid of losing you because you, he knows you're not talking to anybody, that you're not going anywhere, you only speak to him, then he's not going to be concerned about outside co competition. And you guys as men naturally need a little bit of competitive energy. Hmm. Y'all so are going to get somebody hurt. <laughs> 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 well, I'm gonna tell you something. Let, me, let, me address, <laughs> let me address this question first. Um, first of all, I'm more of a fan of a woman who's sure of herself and sure that she wants me. So mm -hmm. I, I, I don't remember, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't remember the last time I approached a woman in the public that I didn't know. Like, I literally don't remember the last time. And that's just cause that's not my get down. Like I don't, and it's not nothing. I've been accused of um, being scared to put myself out there and approach a woman. That's not really what it is. It's just like, I don't know why you exist in my universe until mm -hmm. I see you multiple times in different places. Right. So if I just walk up to you and talk to you at, at the grocery store, that that shit don't really mean nothing. It could be meaningless interaction. Mm -hmm. If I, if I encounter you more than once or twice, then I feel like I'm supposed to talk to you. And then I walk up and talk shit to you because that's my gateway of entry. But, mm -hmm. um, women who smile and do all that shit, that's cool. Like I don't look at it like, come come over here but that's mm -hmm. also because i don't have a thing in my brain that i pick up on social cues from women so most of the time i'm really oblivious to the fact that a woman is flirting with me to be honest with you okay 
Go ahead. You're touching on something though that people that drives women nuts. Like I'm telling you, the fact that you said you'll see multiple times before you speak to them. Mm -hmm. If a woman has interest in you and what we tell ourselves, if you don't come up to us and we are somewhat interested in you, is that you don't want us, you weren't attracted to us. <laughs> uh if you liked me you would have spoken to me you would have asked me out what are we doing wrong and how are we damaging our potential with you when we start telling ourselves those things well first of all that's some vanity shit that don't got nothing to do with me that's that's your insecurities flaring up i don't have nothing to do with your breakouts so <laughs> with that with that being said i don't assume no responsibility for that I'm just, if I don't feel compelled, like if I don't feel energetically to come and speak to you, then I feel like the universe didn't make it so. I don't believe in the fact that, oh, I'm not pretty enough or he spoke to her and it's mm -hmm. like, that's not how I was brought up. Like if you want something, you gotta say something. So if you, if you want my attention, like I, but I know, hold on, listen, <laughs> I actually, my last entanglement that I was in, I had to actually train the woman over time to tell me hey, I want your attention. I'm like, all right, for sure. Mm -hmm. I respect, I don't know, you know how I think. I don't yep. think in signals and smoke signals and sign. I don't know how to do that. So I've had a woman actually say, hey, like I'm flirting with you. I'm like, oh shit, my bad. All right, let's flirt then. Cause I didn't know that's what we was doing. That's just me being, that's, I'm being perfectly honest. <laughs> Poor guy. Poor guy. Yeah, I mean, if you're not getting natural signals or cues, so are you guys comfortable with that? Because Head is saying one thing that I actually am a huge advocate of is us as women shooting our shots, speaking up for ourselves. I'm not saying- Pull that up. Pull up like Steph Curry, yeah, goddammit. We don't necessarily need to ask you about, hey, can I take you out on a date? I don't agree with that. But I do think creating opportunity for us to engage and interact and having some conversations with substance and seeing if there's anything there. And oftentimes us as women won't approach you guys because you guys will think either we're thirsty or we're desperate and we're so hung up with maybe our image mm -mm. that we're afraid to approach. How do Just, you guys feel about women approaching you? I think the, the, the issue is women don't know how to deal with rejection. Like for fellas, us, if we go out and we on and we on a prowl, if we try to get 10 numbers and we secure two, it's a successful day. It's, it's a win. win. It's, it's a, a win. win. You know, so think about that was eight denials. Now a woman would try to talk to one guy once. <laughs> and if he wasn't really feeling her now, it's like, I'm never approaching a guy again. I should go back in the house. Yeah, she go back in the house. Like this is, I feel belittled, you know, and I just feel like that's silly. I think women need to start shooting a shot more to understand how we feel as men. Just because somebody's not into you, it's not the end of the world. Like we do this every day. So mm -hmm. you think that we should be taking more risks as women then? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. absolutely. Thank I think you. Right. Let these women hear that. Because yes, I think what you guys, are, absolutely. What you guys are touching on is circumstance. Much, yeah, it's go too ahead. much accessibility you now. I'm sorry to cut you off, Spice. But no, go ahead, Isaac. I didn't hear you. Sorry. I'm just saying there's too much accessibility. Like, there's too many. Like, you got all these social media apps. You see all these different women. So are, are women see guys. And they getting hit on a lot. But they some of them still be like, well, dang, why they slide in my DM? Why they going to ask me all these different questions? Do you want to get hit on or you don't? You know, <laughs> now, you're, now you're being picky about how you're getting hit on at a time like that. But I feel like everyone should shoot their shot right now because of accessibility. It's, sometimes it's a false sense of accessibility because you feel like you're on Instagram. I'm talking to somebody today. He's like, yeah, man, I just go to Los Angeles on, on social media and I just like four pictures. And then she likes something back. Then I send a message like, hey, pull up. Yep. Or let's go. Get the I'm like, shit, hey, pull up. It's a science to this shit. Like, not like, man, so yeah. it's like, you have to shoot your shot from a different direction and then kind of figure it out. And go from there. That goes ties into the whole confidence thing. If you feel like you a bad bitch, as they say, or attractive woman, there's certain things now that you have to feel comfortable inside yourself mm -hmm. that you're willing to do. But there are also gonna be some things that you're gonna feel uncomfortable that you have you, that you have to do. Just to kind of you know, if you if you're willing to be in this game, you got to play the game. Everything you guys are saying right now is supporting the second point on what men find physically attractive, which is you guys taking into account circumstance and the person actually approaching and letting it be known. And so oh. I love that you guys are supporting this because I didn't even have to throw that out. But you guys just started going with well, it. Like, let well, people spicy. know. The issue is, does the woman want a man or does she want attention? Because think about this, a woman well, can go coach. out, well, woman can go coach. out, she's dressed up with her homegirls, they go to a bar, if nobody's hitting on them, yeah. then it's like, oh, this is whack. Correct. They go to the next bar, mm -hmm. everybody's hitting on them, they love it, but they're turning <laughs> every guy down. So it's like, are you going out for, like you said, vanity and security reasons? Yep. Or are you really looking for a man? Because it's like, women love to have the right of refusal. I want everybody to come mm -hmm. and talk to me, and I just want to say no a bunch of times because right. it makes me feel good. 
But so mm-hmm. when exactly. Guys, over well, years, catch on and go, we're not doing that no more. Oh, guys don't approach us no more because we know the game. Will you guys really be open, though, to women who approach you? I know. I mean, I do this for a living. I'm a hunter, so I'm going to shoot my shot. I'm going to even – I put everybody in a bucket. But, like, for women who are nervous to speak to you guys, do you feel like it does throw off the ginger dynamic or the masculine-feminine energy dynamic of your role in the relationship when a woman shoots her shot at you? I look at it like, um, my bad, go ahead. I'm about to say, mm, I, I, most of my recent dynamics with women started with them saying Funny. something to me first because I am similar to head. I will miss some social cues or some flirtation cues. And I, uh, it, it had to be kind of spoon fed to me that this was mm-hmm. happening. And I was like, oh, yo, the girl offered <laughs> to buy me a girl offered to buy me a drink. I said, I don't drink. Then she was like, okay, well, can I get you water? I was like, mm, I don't drink tap water either. <laughs> <laughs> then she was like, well, do you come around here often? And then I was like, oh, shit. As a matter of fact, I do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh you, you know, flirting it's flirting with me. It's oh, okay. <laughs> it's interesting, this dynamic now, because we'd be like, are you a nice person or are you being nice to me? There are mm-hmm. two, dot- that's two you know what I'm saying? So I had to, you know, I definitely feel you, but you, it's you got to go out there and make your make it known. So I don't think it changes. Clear. I don't think it changes the di- the dynamic between the male and female because once you initiate, I'm gonna take over. That's in every yeah. facet of me dealing with a woman. If you initiate anything, I'm gonna take over every time. So Damn, right. that that we'll just go ahead and blanket that with all things me dealing with women. Mm-hmm. <laughs> go ahead with your I own agree. And, I, and I want to piggyback on all of this so shooting your shot doesn't count if you send your home girl over and we in our 30s and 40s don't, don't do that what that, message, that does, that send? What don't, message don't, does that send what, what message it, does that it send? shows me that you're a little ass girl that's what it shows mm-hmm. if, if your home girl is coming over to me at the bar like hey my friend think you're cute and I'm like so why are you over here Cause you <laughs> think, because the, to be honest you want to come in and kind of slow key shoot your shot, but she seen me first. Mm-hmm. So you really trying to slide in. So don't that send your home really girl happens. over. Head that re- I mean, uh, damage that really happens. That don't honestly truly happens. Your home girl over. Wow. So women, don't send your representative. Mm-hmm. Don't send uh, the homie, the a mascot for you. You need to just go in there and on your own. <laughs> many times yeah. I try to talk to that girl that came over for a friend. I'm like, no, what's up with you? Because you had the confidence to do this. I don't want to talk to somebody that's over there hiding behind tall Long Island drinks like. Right. Waving. Like, no. <laughs> you, you know, I gotta go ahead. Go ahead, it. I just said I think when women when they incorporate that experience of approaching a man, mm-hmm. it transfers over to everyday life. Was she wants that promotion in the job? How she's going to attack some type of issue or yep. a challenge that she's having in her life? Because that's what men. I mean, everything's about experiences. But if you take that rejection or you take that acceptance, whatever it may be, and use it in your life from how you felt and how you and use it, then it's going to help you all the way around. So. I mean, and I think it's like you said, a woman that's confident comes up to approach you is different than a woman that's hiding and shy. You know, it may not be a thing, but if she learns to break through that, mm-hmm. that barrier, she's going to be better off, I think, in the long run. And we're leaving our fate up to ourselves and not you guys deciding who you want. It's us going after what we want. In study show, we're more likely to get the man that we want and get in the relationship that we want with the attractiveness that we want when we shoot our shot and go up and make the first move. So it's not necessarily Mm -hmm. that we're stepping into being the man in the relationship by talking to you guys. We are simply just creating a moment and a circumstance that creates a energy for you guys to feel our vibe, right? Absolutely. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the harder topic, physical attractiveness. This is number three in the um, five things that men need for sexual attraction or for to find a woman sexy. Talk to me a little bit about this because I've probably seen about 20 different filters, 20 different uh, apps that help someone look like what they don't look like. (laughs) As they should. What are men physically attracted to? What do us women need to be doing more of physically to help or enhance you guys speaking to us or being interested in us if we are attracted to yourself? Go ahead. No, go ahead, head. Go ahead, head. No, 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 because I'm go ahead. Go ahead. Because I'm you're going to be nicer than me. Y'all need to, I think all women need to concentrate on being their best selves. There's nothing worse because we're in a virtual era and Mm -hmm. then we're in a pandemic on top of that. Me getting to know you online and then seeing you because you're not probably happy with 
what you look like in real life. You didn't put 50,000 filters on. You didn't smooth skin that didn't need to be smooth. You're bringing in hits <laughs> that didn't need to be bring in. And you know what I mean? And the thing is, I probably would have been attracted to the real you, but yeah. you showed me a mascot. You showed me this Barbie image of yourself. It's still you, but it's this Barbie made up image. So now when I see you, that might turn me off. Mm -hmm. So I feel like to be sexy, in my opinion, is to own what you are. Um, mm -hmm. Even if you heavy set, if you feel like you don't have a lot of hair, whatever you would deem as not pretty, if you just own it and move with that. Like I meet a lot of girls that have no body. They don't have all mm -hmm. the extra features, but the way they carry themselves is still like, who is that? Yeah. You know what I mean? And vice versa. So that's just, I just think you should own what God gave you, whatever that is. I don't know. They're going to go in. Uh, I feel like you have to come to the reality that you're, everybody's not going to find you attractive. Mm -hmm. You're just not going to be like some women. Say that again. <laughs> women. Like everybody's not going to find you attractive. You're going to be trying to please everybody that I'm, everybody's going to think I'm attractive. You already kind of set in this, this preconceived notion of kind of letting yourself down or, or feeling like you got to try to please with these filters and this and this. Do it for you. And you do it for you. You know what I mean? I think that's going to later on translate to like, okay, well, maybe he found me tried, but I know somebody who liked it, or maybe he didn't, you know, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. but if you do it for yourself, ultimately, they, I feel like you're going down the right path. And you're not going to win everything. If you approach a guy, you're not going to just have more wins than losses, but you ain't going, you're going to take them losses, take them lumps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't learn from it. And I'm just saying, because men, we do it all the time. Women, we have to do it too, but I appreciate all the things that women do, because y'all do a whole hell of a lot. Yes. I couldn't imagine waking up and putting makeup on just to go out the house. The hell Thank with that you. Shit. Thank I like you. That, I, but I mean, but do it for yourself as well first, and I think it's that ultimately that'd be attractive to anybody else that approaches you. Head, mm. what you got? Head and Jado. Jado, go attractiveness, ahead. face and body shape. What is it? I feel like what's attractive is a woman that does the work to call whatever she considers attractive. So, mm. what the extra shit is what's unattractive to me. So, therefore, if you feel like uh, this particular body shape is the attractive thing, that's fine. Whatever you think. But are you getting up and working out for that body or are you putting on a shape shifter and vacuum sealing yourself Ooh, to go to the club? Because that's un unattractive. Are you you know, doing the facial routine every night to make sure your skin looks the way that you consider attractive? Or are you putting 16 filters on and making sure you wipe off the blemishes when you post a picture? That's the thing that I find that I can say that I don't necessarily find attractive is I do find attractive as a woman that's doing the work that is applying herself to be what she thinks is attractive rather than a woman that takes these shortcuts because the shortcuts is like, <laughs> no shortcuts. Never mind, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, girl. You you think you know you can drink skinny tea on Thursdays and it'll you know, get you back to where you are now. It's <laughs> lying to us. It's lying. Like real quick, here, and I'm gonna let you go. Like I, I went on a date not too long ago, and the person was beautiful, but the person they represented themselves as wasn't the person I met in person. Mm. <laughs> so now you lied to me. Now if I met you the way I I met you. Mm -hmm. I would have been perfectly fine with this, but you put on a facade and you made up this fake image of yourself yeah. that you made me believe that's who you were. That was unattractive. Now, she wasn't all, you know, what she looked portrayed herself to be, but if I met her as her regular self, I still would have liked her. And she right. cheated me of that opportunity. I like Ooh, I like hard. I like my women broken down to the lowest common denominator. <laughs> <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> what? Prime numbers, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's low. I, I don't I don't like the long division women. Like I don't I wanna if we wanna if I wanna like if I like you, I like you. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, I will tell you. I'm upfront enough to tell you like I don't like what's going on right now. You know what I'm saying? My ex girlfriend, right? you know, baby, yeah, I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? I don't appreciate like Jado, I appreciate what he said because women who do the work, I, mm -hmm. I actually respect more. But I'm still un, I'm still not necessarily attracted to you know, the Power Ranger girls, where they pull out their morpher with their homegirls on Friday night. They go in one room, they morph, <laughs> and they come out as the Pink Ranger. Like, come on, dog. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, right. who got, like, I just don't, like, what the fuck is going on? So, for me, like, like Damage was saying, own your shit. Just own who mm -hmm. you are. And, and I'm more than likely, I'm going to fuck with that more than anything. Like, physical attractiveness. I, and then also shout out to Isaac, what he said, too. Like, everybody not going to like you. That's just yeah. what it is. So the, the sooner you come to grips and to terms with that, the better. You know what I'm saying? For all of us. Because then what happens is you pull up with your insecurities, unload, unpack your bag, and I got to sift through it and figure out what's what. Like, 
that ain't that ain't the play either. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like the physical attractiveness, what should women be doing themselves? What should they be mm. not not be doing? Anything that's inauthentic to themselves. Mm. I agree with that a hundred percent. But to kind of touch back on what was the before what we were saying and speak to what damage was saying was like I do think women get a, a sense of feeling complete from their homegirls or their friend circle that guys yeah. can't do. Like, I'm not about to, to, like, when my boy gets dressed, I'm not about to compliment <laughs> what he's wearing or how it fits on his chest or, like, yo, you working that chest out. Like, <laughs> no. But girls, women can step out the room and then be like, girl, you looking thick. I'll not carry your curves and do a whole lot of shit right. that yeah. boosts women's self confidence. And so they don't really care to meet guys when they step out like they got all the shit some girl slapped her ass before she walked out told her she was thick her shape was crazy and she did all that shit before she even came out the house a guy you walking out with zero compliments <laughs> zero <laughs> you, you just whatever you thought hey this is it hopefully hopefully this black shirt pink i don't know mm -hmm. let's see but, you but know no, what I'm saying? It's very oh different. Oh my God, wait. You're speaking back to of, my heart right now. No, that but for real, so to funny. piggyback off of what Jado was saying, I have a lot of homegirls and they're like, but y'all like girls that look like that. And y'all won't even talk to girls unless they look like that. And I'm like, how did y'all put y'all insecurities on us? Never, I, whatever y'all do, we talk to y'all. Every time y'all <laughs> change trends or whatever, we're still <laughs> talking to y'all. If we had a choice, we'd tell you not to do any of it. If we could choose, we'd be like, don't do makeup. If we can mm -hmm. choose, we say, don't get your body done. But we don't get to choose. So we just go with the punches. But then ladies go out and be like, oh, well, men only like this and that. I'm like, no, your homegirls. When I look at these girls with these Instagram bodies, it's girls in the comments. Ain't a bunch. Right. It's a few thirsty, weird dudes, but mostly <laughs> women like, who's your doctor? Girls are killing <laughs> yeah. you. you know what I mean? It's true. So not everybody is born with natural beauty. That was the third one was static attractive. That's a right? fact. Not everybody is born with that. <laughs> there's only certain, there's only so many faces and so many bodies that of natural people who are born with everything that studies or society requires to say is attractive, right? Because the eyes actually in the beholder. However, as a consensus, a lot of us have the same things that we deem as attractive, a certain bone structure, a certain body type. For those women who don't maybe necessarily have that, the next one is self-presentation, how they represent themselves, how they upkeep themselves, to Jado's point, how they fix themselves up if they're working out, if they're doing those facials. But at what point is too much too much? Because I'm a huge advocate of dressing sexy or enhancing maybe, you know, my breasts or my, you know, butt curve, you know, wearing something fitted. But do you see a woman doing those things and that's too much? Or are you saying the way that uh, it goes to the next step and women are getting surgeries and putting on too much makeup? What is too much to the point where you guys are repulsed by it? Mm. For me, if it's, it's total self-indulgent, if she's totally consumed by that, where the energy is just focused on that, then to me, that's just, that's all because you're, you're missing everything else. This, the experience is also going around in this relationship or us talking. I love it when a woman feels, cause that means like what you just said, doing all those things makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. And when you feel good, then basically our environment is going to feel good. Now exactly. I'm going to feel good because I know you're feeling sexy over there and, and you are looking sexy. So now because you did it for you, now I can compliment you on that. You can feel that I appreciate it. And that may speak to your love language in some capacity. You know, whatever it may be, maybe mm -hmm. what you search for, but you did it because you want to do it. Because think about if a man came and said, like, well, why aren't you putting on them one of them, them waist clenchers or something like that or put some makeup on your face? Now it's going to make you feel down yeah. like I'm not beautiful enough. You know what I'm saying? So it's a fine line where a guy has to look at it and compliment. But a woman should, once she feels good in her skin and that aspect, and that makes you feel good, do it. Because, it, you know, you deal with a partner, I mean, there are going to be some concerns, you know, going back and forth and seeing, and you all had a conversation about that. But we don't get as much attention, though, when we're not dressed up and we're not hair done, makeup done, nails mm, done. Here we go. I don't know. Go I feel ahead. like go women. Ahead. And Jado, go. Yo, bro, I feel like women get so much attention. They get hollered at the most when they're not dressed up. Okay. When you're walking through the grocery store and then somebody trying to stop you on aisle 12 before Facts. you go to 13, or when you're going, just yeah. running out the house real quick to grab Who's something. Shorts and a sweatshirt. They'd be like, That's when the guys would be like, yo, excuse me, uh, If you look like red. this now, I know what you would look like dressed up. So, shit, exactly. what's up? What's happening? Exactly. Shout out to G-Train Fitness. Every time coming from G-Train like Fitness. the common denominator. <laughs> when you say the common denominator, if I get you down there, then I know what you're going to look like. I know you're going <laughs> up. I'm going to say, I'm going to call bullshit. 
on women because that argument to me is moot based on the fact that most of the time when you guys are dressed up, you're paying attention to the ten- to the attention you get because of the yes. simple fact that you put the time in. When you don't, you're not paying attention to the attention that you're getting. Therefore, the audit is off. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that being said, that's bullshit. I don't mm-hmm. even like, I'm going to tell you the situation I had dealing with this insecure woman. And she was like, you know, natural, didn't wear a lot of shit, always dressed down. And I love that. I, I don't like the full, I don't want the full assembly line on, on, on the women, on a woman, right? So what I was trying to explain to her, I was like, listen, whenever you see me with a, with a bad bitch, like, that's the homegirl. You know what I'm saying? Always when you see me with the, that's the homegirl. You see me with a black china, that's the homegirl. However, if you see me at the farmer's market or like at a, at a, and a girl got on some sweats and some some slides. Might be picking out, and we picking out mangoes. I love that bitch. You know what I'm saying? And you should uh-huh. definitely be upset and in, in, in fear of her. You know what I'm saying? Or we fit. She, she buying sage bundles in Lamert Park. I love this bitch. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Yeah, we don't know that as women on the. That's what I tried. That's what I was I'm telling her though. I was her telling her the we thing. Here's the thing, and this going back liking. to your original point. We only see what you guys are liking. Double tap. Spicy. On. Listen. No. Spicy. Listen, listen to me. Now. This is the that. problem. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. As a man, if women shut the fuck up long enough, we will tell you exactly what's going on. But the problem is you're bombarding us with how you feel so much that you can't hear what we're saying. I'm got something to piggyback off of. No, no, no. I, I agree with him because think about this. There's been people I talk to where they're not done up, you mm-hmm. know, spicy, where they don't have the makeup on. They just chilling. Mm-hmm. It's like you might walk in like, babe, you look nice today. Oh, I know I don't. My hair is not done. And Bruh. you just totally negated the compliment that I gave you that meant something to me. Yep. Yeah. So now it's like you. It's not me. It's you. I, I'm complimenting. Mm-hmm. You're not even peeping because. What are you talking about? I look crazy right now. Look at my eye. My hair is not done. I don't have any lashes on. I don't want you to FaceTime me. West it's Coast. like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I'm so like, real. You, you, you tell you, you, and that's, again, her psyche, her insecurity. You got to say, you're welcome. I need you to receive that compliment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they kind of break them down. They're like, well, damn, okay, you did give me a compliment. Thank you. And you got to break through that barrier again. But as women, as they start to watch this, you'll see, you know, different perspectives. Some are similar. But I think the biggest thing a woman has to do is to just can't put everybody in the box. Every man is going to be different. So true. So you can't generalize us. Because we can't do women like that. You can't generalize because everything is all the different factors that come into play. How we were brought mm-hmm. up, what our parents, what they were doing, other relationships yeah. that we mm-hmm. see. So your best bet is to be able to, part of what uh, he said down there, is, you know, said is that listen, listen and pay attention <laughs> and, observe <laughs> and observe. So now you can kind of learn this person without him necessarily saying some things, but then ask questions. That's ask it. Questions. What do you yeah. like? Don't just assume, because I've run through too much bullshit where girls just assume. you. And that it's off the last dudes you dated. If that dog bit you, don't mean I'm going to bite you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Don't treat me the same way. You can't treat me the same way as that dog over there and have all these assumptions. Well, I just thought you was going <laughs> to do it. Because this is <laughs> it. Hell with that. Ask me, and I'll tell you. And that probably save you some wrinkles and, and everything else because you'd be trying to play in your head too damn much. Get what out your head. Right. Ask questions to the person that you're interested in and 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 get the answer from can i ask mm-hmm. like isaac like you just touched on um what had said about listening can i ask you guys what are signs that we don't listen because i don't think women know that we're not listening when you have a, <laughs> like, a we response don't know we're not listening so when you have you a do? response as soon as we say something to you can't yeah. if you have a quick yeah. reaction yeah you didn't listen you didn't even digest what i told you you already <laughs> ready to respond yeah or because you probably had precursors of something that you thought was going to happen from beforehand before you went in the house. You thought this is how it's going to play out. So you responded to that. And I'm like, wait a minute, where'd that come from? Like, mm. not what we was on right now. Or this is an opportunity to examine just conversation or communication with the opposite sex. When you say, like, for instance, when we started this segment mm-hmm. and you said, but guys like this thing on Instagram mm-hmm. and they'd be liking all these mm-hmm. things. The, what you like and what you want are two different things. Mm, I love job. looking at Ferraris drive down the street. I, I like that. I like Lambo. I don't want a Lambo. I would yeah. even if I could go buy one. I don't want that in my parking lot and pant. That's not what I want. Yeah, but I like it. That shit looks great. So it's the <laughs> same thing. It's the same thing to apply to social media, whether it's Instagram or anything. It's like I like a lot of the shit that I look at. She looked great. Mm. She looked dope doing this, doing that. That was great, but. 
necessarily desiring that for yourself is a separation thing that you can only do for yourself. And if a woman sees what you like and wants to then apply this sense of jealousy or the sense of he wants that more mm-hmm. than me, that's where a lot of things, that's where it comes from that you're not even trying to listen because you didn't ask, you just seen and that thought that I meant right. something. You know what I mean? And we're assuming. So, I'm going to give so, you a bar. I'm going to give you a bar that I gave one of my own girls where she had the same issue. She would not listen to what this man was telling her. It was one, one of, she was fucking one of the homies. And it's like, bro, listen to what the man is telling you. The man said, I don't want anything serious right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I know that I'm the one. Nigga. Like, <laughs> wow. like, you are not special. Okay? You are not special. I don't care what your dad taught you. I don't care what, what the world tells you or how many likes you got. You are not going to change this man's mind if this man's mind does not want to be changed. Right. So it's an attentive listening and digesting the information that, that is the missing link. Okay, that is mm-hmm. the missing piece. And then also, the problem is the way we communicate is different. Yeah. I communicate in plain English. I don't, you know me, I don't <laughs> sugarcoat. I just say, hey, like I tell you, like I, there's no miscommunication. Like, hey, I like you. You know what I'm saying? You want to eat that with me? You know what I'm saying? No? All right, fuck it. Cool. Like, that's that's it. Boom. It ain't, right. it ain't complicated. The complication comes because women aren't attentively listening when a man right. says something. Mm-hmm. And then when they do listen, they didn't double back and utilize and weaponize the information. Damn. That's another red flag. Mm. So the, 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 the example that I, the bar that I'm going to give you right now is when you're listening to a man, ladies, because I know you got a lot of ladies that be mm-hmm. watching your shit because mm-hmm. they want dates and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Ladies, when you first meet a man, listen attentively to what he's saying and do not react negatively when the man gives you truthful information. Mm. So if you ask a man what he did this weekend, he said, oh, me and my ex grabbed something to eat. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't blow up because what that subconsciously tells the man is that you can't handle truthful information. Mm-hmm. And then now that's how you get the, what'd you do this weekend? Oh, shit. You know, nice. that's how you start getting them kind of answers because <laughs> you reacted negatively to the truth. You know what I'm saying? I'm right there, listen. Yep. Yeah. Bars. So that's to, the truth. To truth. This head though point I mean, to this to this point head people women are going to listen to this though and say so I can't give my authentic emotions or my authentic feelings. What do yeah, you say you to can. that? Yes, she you need to be authentically that, that not offended her. by a man that's not yours. <laughs> <laughs> and to that point, boom! Yes, if he is not yours, you are not entitled. Yes, exactly. That is the that is the part because you touched on earlier when a man tells you he doesn't want you. Like listen to him and the fact that. Look, I'm going to just tell you guys what you guys just outlined right now. It is the emotional intimacy formula. It is share, inquire, respond. Share, inquire, respond. That is actually how you find out everything you want to know about the person and being vulnerable enough to be open to what he says and trusting that what he's saying is the truth. When he shows that he's not, there will be signs, there will be actual actions of credibility and reliability. If he doesn't follow through on that reliability, we know he cannot be trusted. He's not a credible source. But oftentimes what happens, though, is that we have a vision of what we want our future to look like with you guys. And so we start acting on that, not acting out on what you're telling us. See, that's crazy. That's nuts, bro. (laughs) Y'all got wedding colors and no man. (laughs) Yes. Like that. And this is the challenge. No one should do that. This is why I'm trying to help my women. This is why I'm trying to help them. I'm speaking on their behalf right now because we really do operate from our feelings, right? Like there's logic and then there's our emotions. Oftentimes, are you guys in the mindset that us as women operate off of emotions more than logic? Yes or no? Hell yeah, I know that Absolutely. all day. That's yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Because I think they earlier- look like it's like emotion versus logic rather than emotion and logic. It's yes. like logic is against you somehow. Yeah. It's like, no, <laughs> it's not against you, girl. This is not a battle. I'm just using logic to converse with you right now. But yeah, emotions and logic are like like opposite rival gangs or something. You know what I mean? So what can we be doing more of as women in your guys' opinion? Because you guys are extreme like masculine alpha men over here and you guys are more logical thinkers. I know all of y'all, all of y'all guys are very logical and know how to, you know, tap into your emotions, but you're not operating and making decisions on emotions. You guys are making decisions on logic. Us as women, if we happen to be more emotional when it comes to our dating experiences with you, right? We're just in the courtship process. We're just getting to know you. How do we 
pull back on our emotions though when we're feeling you when we like you what should we be doing hey, i don't think you necessarily have to pull back on your emotions i think you should articulate how you feel and not just assume we understand the evolution in your mind because you could date a girl for two weeks yep. and y'all on the same page but then that third week mm -hmm. her mind and her emotions have evolved to something else and you didn't let me know yep. so now you're catching all these attitudes with me because now you see me in a different light that you didn't converse with me about yeah and i'm right. thinking we're still doing what we was doing the last two weeks so i think it's just about not thinking we can't assume or read like you should have known i've been doing this it's like no you have to articulate that what you got going on in your head I can't read your emotions and how you feel. Talk to me. Mm. You're supposed give to me, know. You yeah, just give supposed me the to know. opportunity. Think that is a good one. What you what? guys both just said. Yeah. You should have known. About. Should just leave your whole vocabulary. You because there's nothing that you should have just known. Yep. Everything it should be conversed about and agreed upon. If it's anything that comes with you should have known. Today was my birthday. Right? You should have known. I'd be calling you every day <laughs> that I like you like that. You should have known. All of those should have known set you up for personal failure. It sets you up to be upset because they think that anybody that you think should have known, even rather, even if it's just a friend, they don't know. It's okay. Just we don't know. It, it, it ties into that, like even a, a woman approaching a man, scared of rejection. Mm -hmm. So now also when it comes down to all these emotions, they're scared of rejection again, even though they've been talking to you for three minutes, I mean, yes. for three weeks. And then they don't articulate it. So now they're fighting in their head sometimes like, should I tell him this? He should know this. Yep. All these different things. And now that comes out and seeps out emotionally and probably has a negative undertone to it. Yeah. Uh, one time, or I'm going to say, I'm doing, I'm dating this guy. I'm doing all these wifely duties and things like that. But we're mm -hmm. not even in a relationship. So why am I doing all these different things? Well, you feel good at doing them. But you feel, <laughs> you feel good doing like for him. But you feel that he doesn't appreciate it because in your head, you feel like he shouldn't be getting all this. Mm -hmm. But have you talked to him about it? You know, no. talk about it. I just, uh, learn to either, you know, I, like you said, when you articulate it, I feel like as a person, it's like going to therapy. When you basically say it, you feel better because you got yeah. it out. Yep. And now you have an under give him an opportunity to have an understanding and basically communicate back to you. Yep. So it's women, get out your damn heads. You're in your own damn way when you get in your heads with all the emotions. Speak on it. I'm talk speaking about on behalf of them right now. I'm speaking on behalf of them right now, Isaac, because this is some this is something that I hear often. So I know that they're feeling this. When we share our emotions or our feelings with you, it is not reciprocated or met with a soft place to land on, a safe place, right? Now, we share uh, our emotions and then you guys yeah. are like, oh, okay. Now, and we just poured our hearts. Now, did you share your emotions after we didn't have this rigorous back and forth? Well, I don't know why you got the attitude with me. <laughs> right. And right. now you finally want to share, but I'm over you at this point. <laughs> Right. You didn't confuse me. Now you want to share. Now I'm already like, I'm off you before you share. Mm -hmm. You know, there's times I didn't talk to people and we already had some weird vibe before the conversation. I'm mm -hmm. just like, why we didn't talk about this then? Now I'm just like, I don't care no more. So maybe right. that's a piece <laughs> of it. I'm not saying that's what it is all the time, but I've been there. It's like, you're not, you're not always going to get the response that you want, but at least yeah. you got it out and you will be honest and genuine with yourself. So that's why I said it starts with the confidence within yourself as well. And with the work that you're doing. So then when you have these moments, you can work through that shit. You can have, you know, I'm like, okay, well, you didn't get response what you wanted. All right, cool. I can go with it. So, it's not easy to say it and done, but that's working on your damn self and getting to understand it. Cause I can't just because you love me don't mean I love you right now. It's just West that's Coast. A, that's, yeah, mm. that's a, that's what's a covert contract. I miss you. Mm. Oh, <laughs> covert I you. <laughs> that's a covert contract. I may not miss you right now, but you the reality of that situation is that's reality. And it's gonna be like that in relationships. It ain't gonna be all that fucking glitter and unicorns yeah. all the time. Bruh. I believe that women have romanticized the entire process. Yes. And they feel like it's supposed to be this, this fucking Snow White story with a happy ending and bells and birds and dubs. Yep. Listen, bro, that's not how this shit work. So what I'm saying, what I'm my perspective is when you guys come and bear all of your emotions and dump it on us, you know what I look, I look at that like. You ever have an office job and then somebody <laughs> just walk in your office and dump a whole bunch of shit on your desk? Yeah. Like, here, you got to do this work. And then mm -hmm. just walk away. That's how I feel when you done been compiling all of these emotions mm -hmm. over there. I don't have nothing to do with this shit. You done been compiling all these emotions over there and then you just walk in my office one day and be like, boom, here you go. You, you did it's two weeks worth of work. Well, why we didn't start on this shit two weeks ago? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, 
that's what and i believe that's what i was saying like you need to you need to be held accountable for that and i don't believe in baby and grown-ass people man woman or otherwise like if you you need to be held accountable for doing the work yourself i'm not gonna do the work for you and me that shit crazy so here's the thing spicy <laughs> this is is complicated i'm a precursor i'm okay. premise this statement with it's not easy mm -hmm. so, but everybody especially we're talking about women in this situation mm -hmm. so we'll say women need to understand you can sell you can tell your feelings but saying your feelings does is still going to come with resistance so this form of resistance that's going to happen is natural in communication if you tell somebody you want something that they're not naturally giving you yeah it's going to come with resistance yep. but the resistance part is what tips people off it makes guys upset makes women upset it makes people it doesn't even matter what kind of relationship it is but specifically in the relationship dynamic what if you say i want lemonade and he's like oh, i don't fuck with lemonade and it's like oh my god you never give me what i want <laughs> and then it turns into this whole shit but the resistance of i don't want lemonade i don't like women is it, it comes with natural for a tea drinker or whatever the fuck right so I think the real gotcha gotcha is to really start examining examining yourself and being, are you capable of people not really wanting what you want and a still giving or providing that type of energy or love or whatever you want to give to that person without mm. removing it now because they're not giving you what you think you deserve in that moment. Right. Can we still function Can you handle without the, the conditions? Yeah, without the conditions, the resistance. Yeah. Absolutely, because we do put conditions on our love. Like, I will be into him if he does this. I will like him if he responds this way, if he makes me feel this way. It's always about like how the person makes you feel, how the person makes you feel. And I do One think thing. that we need to take more responsibility on how we make you guys feel, but also being okay if we don't feel the same in that moment. We're never okay with that. We mm. want you guys to feel how we want you to feel when we want you to feel it. And we want right. you to make us feel how we want to feel when we want to feel it. That's a lot. It's a lot, <laughs> bro. It's a lot. It's not, it's How about you do the work at home before you come to work? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> not going to happen, bro. I know. Spend your weekend <laughs> doing the extra credit, then come to me. Wait, hey, this man. is not true. People come to the Spicy Life all the time. Like, I talk to a lot of women who are actually in this, which is the fifth thing that you guys find attractive. What you guys are touching on is the fifth thing, self-expansion. This is mm -hmm. us working on our personal self-growth so that we when we come to the relationship with you growth through mate involvement can happen if we don't have previous growth if we haven't worked and loved on ourselves when we get into the relationship with you we're looking for you to fill our cup up and we don't even recognize what some of these things are that we're asking for because we haven't fulfilled it our, on our own so you guys found more value in us actually when we've done the self-growth then we teach you we can show you we have things to complement in your life and expand you through now you're going to be more sexually aroused to us. Now you're going to be yes. turned on because we are not only building ourselves continuously, but also building you because you're expanding through our involvement. Right. right. Totally agree. That's I'm so happy you guys agree with that. I totally <laughs> agree. Absolutely agree. Women, women looking at we looking at talking about they, why they got bash on women. What about them? What about them? And it's like <laughs> we're just speaking from a perspective as of right now. We understand it's a two way street. Mm -hmm. for damn sure. But it's right now we're speaking to women. But what you just said was phenomenal, and that's like that's the truth. Now, one for me. Sex appeal lies when a woman is walking in her passion and she is confident who she is, but she's yeah. also living what she wants. She has that independency. That allows me to feel, for me, to feel like I can come in and how can I assist you? Yeah. Not, not do it for you, but how can I assist you in this to uplift you in what you're doing already? Yeah. And there'll be, be someone there for you as a, as a friend, as a, a spouse and that nature, you know, but, but if I got to come in and figure out everything for you, then now I got to try to figure out my own thing going over here now. Who's gonna provide for both of us, and who's gonna have my back with I got if I need if I fall? Hey, Tuh, I mean, like, provide that is still you, and if you can't provide, she's out of there. She's so, out of here. That's even if she comes with nothing to offer, she'd be like, "Oh, this dude can't provide for me, myself, my yeah. mom, my kid, my all my homegirls. <laughs> but I'm done with him because he's broke." But I want I want I want to give ladies a fair warning. And, I, and this is not every guy, but those guys that can provide for you and your mom and all that, that's down to do that, they're not in it to be in a relationship. They're in it to control you. They mm -hmm. want something they can control. So all those ladies that is out there looking for that, mm -hmm. please be careful because you're going to get with a sociopath who would, who would love to put you in a house that he owns and makes you drive the car he wants you to drive and says, I'm going to take it away whenever I want to take it away. And you're going to do what exactly. I tell you to do. And the that's thing is, be careful. Women, like going back to what Head said, uh, 
when they fantasize this idea that it's not Snow White anymore, it's now Russell Wilson. You need to be like, <laughs> where can I find a Russell Wilson that's going to come in and do everything that he did for Sierra? But see, the crazy thing about that is you can, you might have been with a dude that's going to pro- eventually grow into a Russell Wilson or Russell Wilson didn't show up on Sierra Door already just like R- Russell Wilson. They went through whatever they went through to get to the point mm-hmm. that he got to play to feel comfortable to offer that to F- to Sierra. But see, these guys nowadays are not afforded that opportunity. As soon as you don't, as soon as you don't show up at six o'clock when you and you're six thirteen, it's like, oh, I'm <laughs> done with your ass. <laughs> you what? said you was gonna be here at five fifty eight. It's six thirteen. What kind of bitch was you seeing on the way? What was you doing? But nah, you know, cool. let's let's talk about it, Jado. Russell Wilson was single before he met Sierra. Talk about it now. People like Russell Wilson is considered corny. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, but then when mm-hmm. Sierra got it with it and, and they made their marriage work, I think yeah. it was both sides. Mm-hmm. Oh, now I want a Russell Wilson, but you exactly. probably was already with one and you thought he's or he probably did approach you at the bar, but he was corny. Yeah, he, exactly. he didn't have that edge. Yeah, look like he might slap you or he don't look like you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, he wasn't, he wasn't cripping. Yeah, exactly. sometimes he wasn't gonna <laughs> step up to all the parkers when they when they try to get you for your seven dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't gonna put that situation to rest. Yeah. Yeah. With that. So, hey, you know what's crazy is I always and I'll be telling all my homegirls all the time, I'm like, women always want the rooster in the hen house. But you know what? A rooster's gonna roost. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That part. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, women always man. want a women women want a successful, uh, a successful, accomplished, independent. Rich man that yep. got that got all the time for her. Like what? Where the fuck they do that? Faithful and handsome. Don't forget. And that. a good-looking <laughs> dude that's handsome and, and uh, that's exactly right. Faithful and only desires you, girl. They, they want the they want the man. Done. They want the man that every woman in the world wants. But then he wants him. She wants this man to get on national television and say, "But I only want her." Right. What the fuck <laughs> does that look like? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't girl go ahead girl go ahead come on Find bro Can I listen if, listen ladies this is the thing get you a reggie if you know the reggie is come see me uh a reggie he's a regular nigga i'm a world conquering <laughs> alpha male motherfucker i'm not gonna stop until i run everything on this planet so if you want right. a rooster a rooster's gonna roost you know what i'm saying and he gonna be busy roosting so <laughs> So are you telling us that we need to be patient for men like you guys who are successful and building your careers and that are climbing right now? No, Mm -hmm. what I'm saying, I'm sorry, go ahead. What I'm saying is you need to be a compliment to whatever the life is. If you want Russell, if you want Russell, you need to compliment me and let me get to that status to where I need to be without nagging and complaining to me about Susan at work. I don't give a fuck about Susan at work, nor do I care which nail color you pick. Oh, got it. Okay, so this is what I just did right now. Ladies, I want you to pay attention to what I just did. I didn't understand what he had said, so I asked him for clarity before Mm. I made an assumption and jumped into my feelings. Thank you, Head, for that clarity. Now I know how to properly respond to what you just shared and now have insight into what you're thinking and feeling and how to behave. (laughs) I'm trying to help you, ladies. I'm trying to help you. (laughs) Well, also, we got to we got to take into an account that we are a certain kind of men that are moving and doing what we say. There's men out there that will confuse a woman that's trying to do all these cues that we teach them because he's just going to say whatever that he thinks she wants to hear. Mm-hmm. And then he flips the script. So women also try to understand, you know, take your time to realize what kind of man you're dealing with at the same time, because all mm-hmm. of us. We are comfortable walking in our truths. If I don't yeah. got ten dollars in my pocket, I'm gonna tell you I'm broke. I'm not yeah, gonna pretend I'm not broke. I'm not gonna walk around and act like I'm still balling. I'm going to be broke and own it and make fun of it. So you know, make exactly. sure you just know what kind of guy you're dealing with. I always tell women to build on what you stand damage. I always tell women. I say you should fuck with the man that's not afraid to tell you the truth at risk of losing you. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that how we identify who's the fraud and who is the you know legit dude? Because a lot of times guys will like you know smoke and mirrors and gas us up, and then we get a good one, and then we think that he's fraudulent, but he actually was the good. Like we don't know how to tell anymore because there's so many different type of dudes out there. But you look at that; it's the same with women. The women, like we're talking about, the women, they dial themselves all up, and then we don't necessarily see is that fraudulent. And so sometimes, mm-hmm. yes, for the position in order for me to get the woman that I like, I have to be a little. They, you know, some women like they had to be a little fraudulent, you know, to get that. 
You know, so it's like it's just just when you get tired of playing the different games. And like he said, walking in your truth. I remember when I came out of L.A. and I'm, you know, I'm L.A., but I was broke. But I I started making fun of it. Like, I'm like, shit, we going here. Well, I don't know. You going to eat or something like that. I ain't going to get nothing right now. I'm going to drink some water. (laughs) I got some food back at the house. You know what I mean? If you fuck with me and you want to come, come to the house and we can watch a movie there. I got enough for the red box back then. So, I mean, we good there. You know, but, you know, it's just a matter of. That's the true confidence in a man when he's mm-hmm. able to be able to walk in his truth and tell you straight up at the risk of, like you said, risk of losing. You may not mess with me, but at the same time, I'm okay because I'm on my grind. That's the guy that you know is going to work and get up early in the morning when he needs to go to an interview, be on time, do all the things, the accountability that he needs to to make himself uh, pr- progress. And if you're going to be there, you can be there. Like he said, help him in that situation. Yeah. I, not do it for him, but just assist like, hey, you got this. And you may not be right for you in a relationship right then. It may not be what you want. But don't shit on them. You can't don't do that. <laughs> I, I think ladies should just, you know, how how I kind of assess women sometimes is, you know, if I'm starting to get to know them, I ask them, yo, what you got going this week? What, what you got going today? Mm-hmm. And it's because, of course, I want to see if they are all right. But second, I want to know your schedule. Are you yep. doing things that's going to help you grow? So if you're dealing with a guy and he's a baller and you be like, hey, what you up to today? Oh, nothing. Chilling with the homies. Then how are you balling? <laughs> And I'm not saying you can't ball and chill with the homies, but you need to figure out what is it that makes you successful. If you're dealing with a dude for three months and he got money, but you're not understanding why, mm-hmm. that's your fault if he turns out to be a fraud or a scam. Mm-hmm. You did no research to understand what this dude does at all. To do, like, you just happy with the result of getting money. You know what I mean? So I hate it's to like, tell you, my girl, brother. He want to go eat. I don't know. I don't know what he do. But he- <laughs> I was about to say, damage, I hate to tell you, my brother. Just like uh, we were talking about, they're interested in the bottom line that what they're seeing at the end. She don't care how you made money. She cares about does she get what she wanted? If, oh, you she know, wants her. to eat at Laurie's tonight, and he said, "I'll take you where you want to eat. Oh, you want to drink this? I'll go get you what you want to drink." She ain't asking you, nigga. Did you go clock in on time? She want what she want. She got what she want. Okay, and I then, hear you, Jado, but I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop you because. The, a lot of the people who who are listening are tuning in because they really do want love, right? Like, oh. I can do a whole episode on, like, how to run game on a dude and how to be fraudulent. And, like, I could do a whole thing on that. But these are women who really want to know, like, how do we know when you guys are authentic and ready versus mm-hmm. whether you just want to date and fuck? Okay. Listen so to the man. Different. Have conversations. Huh? Listen to the man. I would say just be happy with yourself the guys that when you are really building yourself up Mm -hmm. and really putting that time into curating your idea of what you think deserves that kind of guy you only are going to you're going to be able to call out and just distance yourself from guys that aren't on that level right away it's like the people that connect with you that you actually like spending time with and conversing with might not be on every page, every level that you are, but that's something that you can help with. That's something that you got to do, show them the way to get to certain spaces. But then there, there are also parts and elements to that person that you're interested in conversing with and interested in dealing with. And so I don't know if you can just tell a person right off either way, just be like, Oh, he's not, he's with the games. Oh, he's really looking for, because then it also comes down to the other, what, we on six, five things. Are you even attracted to this guy? <laughs> Do you like talking to him? Does he does he smell right when he pulls up? Like, it's so many different things yeah. that also leads up to this sixth thing that's like, yo, are you really going to overlook all those other things because he has number six? But it sounds like what you're saying, though, is if like we truly love ourselves, we'll be able to recognize if you're legit or not because you will reciprocate the love that we have for ourselves to us. Let me, let me add something. To time, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Jay. Let's finish your point. Oh, I was going to say, what well, it's really like when you are necessarily putting that time into yourself, you're not willing to connect and communicate and really spend time with person that's not exciting those things about yeah. you. So if you don't have, like, when women are something that a lot of guys will say is like, you know, she's bad, but when I actually talk to her, mm-hmm. like, and she said, yo, uh, oh, my mama babysitting my, or whatever the fuck, something that's not my, you know, stimulating our mind that we're like, oh, you want, oh, okay. You want, we're just chilling. We're just talking. You want that to drink? Oh, okay. You want this to eat or you want to go back to talk to this person, whatever the thing is that sets your mind off. Mm -hmm. It kind of starts to uh, give you an idea that maybe you guys are 
you need to either speak directly to that thing or maybe you are accepting understanding that that person isn't necessarily on the same playing field with you at that space mm-hmm. i'm telling you i'm put it put them game real quick women and men both stop doing all the texting conversation if you have a conversation with somebody you're gonna find ah. everything you need to know but now, now women like i don't like to talk i ain't pick up the phone i can't believe you calling me Oh, men be like, you know, but you have to have conversation. Even in men's society, Kane got in trouble in the interrogation room because they kept asking the same question. He said, <laughs> what time did you buy the beer? Buy the beer, 10.45. What time did you buy the beer? 9.45. If you ask people and you have a conversation, you will find out who they are. You will find, mm-hmm. instead of worrying about going on a date, well, he took me out to go eat at this dinner. It's like, walk your ass in the park. This is that's going to be in the park. I got a coffee or a chai tea for you. Let's go walk in the park and just have a conversation Talk. for a second. If you start doing that, you'll start learning more about a person before you have sex with them. And honestly, that walk in that conversation could arouse you even more when you do decide to have sex with them because now you're turned on by some other things called priming the pump. You know what I mean? Get the lady aroused and some other by having a conversation and put some time in. You know, and you're also going to learn more about him. He's going to learn more about you. And you'll decide whether y'all want to, you know, have sex or, or, or go further. And you probably could leave like, hey, you know, it was nice meeting you, but maybe there's nothing here or there's something here. You want to go get something to eat now? But have conversations, man. Talk to people. I think the conversations is important, but I also feel like if people were to just be honest with themselves and others, mm. a lot of this shit wouldn't happen. Like a lot That's of this stuff wouldn't out. exist. Yep. Like women, I, I, I'm going to go with from the man's perspective on this, obviously, but, and there are four men on here, right? Three of them, which are not me. How many times have you ended up hooking up with a girl, but not being with her? That's a freak. That's that's a thing that happens, right? That's a lot. <laughs> okay. How many times has a woman walked up to you at whatever bar you was at and say, hey, I'm interested in hooking up with you with no strings attached? Yeah. Never. So with that being Damn said, it. anyone ever said so that with, too? <laughs> with that being said, no. with that, but but the, but what I'm saying <laughs> is the situation the happens, yeah. but that that rhetoric never happens. And that's because people aren't being honest with themselves. Mm-hmm. Sure. So Women have to take that risk, that accountability as well. It's like, if you don't want to be with me, I'm okay with that too. Say you don't want to be with me. Just like, I'm going to tell you. The day I figure out I don't want to be with you, I'm going to tell you. But the miscommunication, again, happens because nobody is communicating like Isaac said. And I feel like most of the time people are communicating, the other party isn't listening. No. True. Learning how to communicate, I- Learning how to communicate with that specific person. Right. right. Know so, your and- audience. Yeah, And if you're looking for love and you're looking for something true and you're looking for marriage, I think you need to create an environment where everybody can be their authentic selves. So I think that starts off with a, just a legit, legit friendship, like you said, communication, but also not putting pressure on whatever, whatever relationship is early in the game. Let both individuals have the opportunity to be them so you can fall in love and be attracted to the actual person and not the person they're representing themselves to be because they're trying to impress you. And that's on both sides. So I feel like everybody should create an environment where, you know what, if you talking to two other girls, tell me about it. Like we just got to know each other. We're not really talking right now. Be able to be able to have a man be able to be open with you and you get to really see who he is. Then you can decide I'm attracted to who this guy Mm -hmm. really is. But he could be talking to three girls, but he's scared to tell you because he think you're going to react a certain way or whatever. And y'all ain't even getting to the point where y'all having sex. You know, y'all not even at a point where you're having sex or y'all doing anything yet y'all really just getting to know each other he should be open enough to tell you what's going on when you create that environment where everybody can just be them y'all can have fun conversations and be like you want to know some crazy stuff i did when i was 19 something that might literally embarrass him that he probably shouldn't tell you but he feel comfortable telling Mm -hmm. you when you get to know that person then you can decide like this is somebody i really want to be with i like the flaws of him i like what he does when he's angry i like what he does when he's being sarcastic and then you wait, you stop wasting all your time. So I think build legit friendships first. That's Agreed. overall, that's my advice. I totally I've agree been guilty of, of doing that before, putting pressure on her. Mm. And what I, happened? It didn't work out. I was pressing <laughs> Okay, but look at da- uh, Damage and Head and Isaac and Jado. Us as women, we have needs too, right? So we know that we want a relationship with you. You guys may say, like, you know, we start off as friends. And I am a huge advocate of just build the friendship. Don't get sex involved until you are ready for that. But oftentimes, oftentimes, Ah! I'm sure you're not. 
But oftentimes <laughs> sex does enter into the relationship before it is a committed relationship. And our feelings get freaking hurt because we have emotional attachment and hormones that are released and all kinds of other things that go mm-hmm. on when we let you hit. So let, I don't hold on, hold on. Okay, Time when we out. hit as well. When we when we Okay, because I have a problem mutual, with that rhetoric. I don't like that's problematic. A, okay. I don't like that shit. You didn't let me do nothing. We, we it was an equal mutual. exchange of goods absolutely. and services. You're right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh mutual intent and <laughs> and so when we when we actually do decide to make that decision and we don't get what we thought from it, right? We don't get the relationship because you guys told us you weren't looking for anything at the moment. How do we then protect ourselves? Because sex actually does make it a lot more risky for us. But mm. you had her over here saying, no, let's, let's get it on. But doesn't that make the relationship more complicated? So when should we be doing it as women? Because women are confused about that. I, I think y'all, y'all know. We can't answer that for y'all. Oh, I can answer it for you. Okay, go <laughs> ahead, Jada. So here's the thing, what you should be doing enjoying your absolutely the reason why you connected with that guy on a sexual level is because you were enjoying your moment whatever you guys did that day that led to that moment Mm -hmm. whatever those conversations were that led you to that moment led you to share something that you desire to have in that moment as well as he did planning the future telling yourself now this is going to be this and this and this is what's mm-hmm. actually hurting your feelings. It's not that it, he did something in that very moment when you guys shared that moment together. Share that moment if that's what you want. Enjoy this moment and be here fully with that person fully instead of telling yourself this means that because it mm-hmm. don't. You don't know what it means. If yeah. that's what you want, then converse with him and see what's going to happen next if y'all can tell the future. But y'all can't tell the future. Yeah. So uh, accept that. You know what's crazy? A, a crazy thing that was told to me is a hundred percent of the time that I've been heartbroken or my my energy's been tempered with or whatever, my feelings have been hurt because of whatever my situation was, I ended up getting back here. I ended up getting back to a space where I was fine. I'm mm-hmm. cool. I'm able to set up and go into another relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Same with those women. They're avoiding something that they've beaten a hundred times before. They've beaten hundred heartbreaks before with yeah. whoever. Not to say that you want a heartbreak, but if that's what happens, you know that you can overcome it because you can deal. You've dealt with it. You've done it before. So I would say enjoy yourself and be fully, really transparent with yourself in that moment, and really see what you want. If that's not what you want, then you wouldn't be there. Don't do it then. Just don't be there. If you're there and that's what you want, then be there and enjoy what it comes with. And what it don't come with. Sometimes it might come with that, but you can handle it. You've dealt with it before. And does sex ever make you guys more into a woman? After she has sex with you, are you like, oh my God, I find you so much more sexier. And you know what? I actually do want to be with you now. Does sex ever help us? I'm trying to think if it I'm, ever, in, if it, it's enhanced a couple of situations, mm-hmm. but I don't think it was the discerning factor because it, and I don't know if I'm not going to, I'm going to jump out the window and speak for most men like me <laughs> and say that that's not going to get it by itself thank you that's not gonna make me be like oh yeah you're my wife that's not it that's never gonna be the case just because in in real life i'm being honest and these this is for the single women that that follow you if i'm being honest we don't fucking know what we want most of the time like that we don't know when we when we first get to know you or we're interacting on that level that we want to be with you for the rest of our life or we want to be with you intermittently we don't know that we're trying to figure that out just because you've made up your mind that that's what you want doesn't necessarily trickle down to me so with that being said and again this is me jumping out the window most of the time i want to see a woman in every scenario before i commit to it that's just me i want to see you happy mad rage crying Every I want to see every every spec every facet so there's no surprises. I want that it's not and 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 the last girl I was talking to really disliked my analogy, but I was like, she don't like being compared to a car. I'm going to drive the car before <laughs> I buy it. That's just what's gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna play with the windshield wipers. I'm gonna pop the trunk. You know what I'm saying? Like I need to yeah. know what the, what I'm getting myself into for driving. sixty months. Yeah. It's sixty months. And, and, and the more times than not, you end up having a kid. I don't have children. I know damaged guy. I know Jado. I don't have no kids. So real life shit can happen. Yeah. We're not going steady no more. You're not wearing my Letterman jacket to the Sadie Hawkins. Like, that's not what this is. We old now. Mm-hmm. Like, we ain't, I'm not finna be acting like this ain't that. This is that. I got a mortgage. Like, real shit is going on. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if you are somebody that want to come into my life, 
I need to know all of these things. And that comes mm-hmm. with communication. Shout out to Isaac. <laughs> Respect. <Yeah>. Respect. <laughs> I appreciate that because oftentimes we think that being sexy is being sexual. And I think that that gets misunderstood as, you know, now he's going to want me. Now we just, you know, we just did it. Now he's, you know, going to be even more into me because I did this new position or I let this new person in or I tried this for him. We're performing all these tricks thinking that that's going to make you want to go to the next step in the relationship or that now we're entitled to all of your time, to all of your energy, to all of your space, to all of your money. Like we put all of these like circumstances around what sex means without having communicated what it means to us. To Explain me. this to me, Spicy. When when I, I've been in a situation where the woman felt away after I had sex with her, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, we could just not do it. And she was offended by that. I'm like, well, why are you offended? You you have a problem with the intimacy. Right. Let's just ex- let's just cut that part out. We could hang out. We can go bowl and do whatever fuck you want to do. But we not having sex as of, as of today mm-hmm. moving forward. She actually had a problem with that. Yeah, because she explain to that still, to me. She wanted to still have physical intimacy, but she wanted to be entitled to the emotional intimacy as well. And you took the physical intimacy out of it, and you were like, "Okay, let's not make this sexual. Let's not like put this in it." And she still wanted the, to feel needed and desired by you, which is not unnatural. She wants it all, though. We, as women, we want it all. We feel entitled to it all. We want intellectual intimacy, recreational intimacy, emotional <laughs> intimacy, and physical intimacy. But what I advise every woman on is not even to get involved in the physical intimacy until emotional intimacy has been established first. Until mm-hmm. you know how he thinks, how he feels, how he works, how he operates, how he gets down, do not invest your body in How he roosts. Yeah, don't invest your body in something that your mind and your emotions can't even handle. Why are we, we, we need to operate with a little bit more self-regulation, especially if we're grown and we wanna be in an adult relationship. The sex doesn't make it adult. What makes it adult is the proper things that you guys are saying, communication, honesty, transparency, authenticity. But we're not being truthful with ourselves. Spicy, I feel like that is true, but I also feel like when a woman does that much investment, now she's going to be even more upset or something when things don't go the way and she decides to have sex with this person after she invested all this in them. She's like, now I decide to have sex with you and I still don't get what I wanted, but I invested Mm -hmm. all this time. So sometimes I look at it, it's like sometimes when people go in a relationship, they put sex on the pedestal. And it's been, yeah. oh, well, this, this has mm-hmm. this much power. That's why I won't sleep with you. But the whole time, you, you know, you, 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 you're fighting against yourself. Yeah. One time I dated a girl and I was, I was in my space. I was like, you know what? We dating. I'm kind of getting to know you and like that. Like, I don't want to involve. I said, sex makes things complicated. She looked me in my eyes. She said, not having, having, not having sex makes things complicated. I mm-hmm. said, shit. Well, how am I supposed to? <laughs> you're like, and what are you are you doing with that? We're having sex. You know what I'm saying? Like, because, I mean, once she said it to me, I'm like, okay, I guess you're good. But it did make things a little more complicated. Yeah. And we go back to it. Being being how, how good you are sexually and being in tune with your body is a is a box for me to check off is going to a relationship. Because that means that you put in the yeah. work on those type of things. Yeah. Don't come in this 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 room and into this chamber or whatever, not knowing your body and not knowing how to <laughs> chamber. <laughs> with all that pressure. Okay, Fifty Shades of Grey. that Fifty Shades of Grey. You don't come here yeah. not knowing what the hell you want, trying to put all that pressure on me. Because Agreed. Look, that, that ain't gonna work. I'm gonna be good. Agreed. I'm not telling, I'm not, don't worry, fellas. I'm not telling the women not to have sex with you. What I am mm. saying is so for worry. us to make a accurate, logical decision when it mm-hmm. comes to having sex with you and not an emotional decision. Like you guys told us earlier, um, function with more yeah. logic. Does this decision to have sex with you serve my goal? If it doesn't serve my goal based on what my goal no. is, then I, think, I don't need to be having it. What's the goal? Is yeah, I think That's it's up simple. to every woman. Every woman has a but, different goal. I mean, I'm married now, so my goal is always just to bust a nut. But when it comes to what the woman is dealing with <laughs> in that situation, everybody has a straight she face. Made, like, she, <laughs> like, I can't me, hide my faces. My husband asked me for a little bit more romance the other day. He was like, because I'm trying to get pregnant. He was like, can we have a little bit more romance? <laughs> like, I've been taking him down like four times a day. He's like, I can't. Like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> That's another, uh, my ovulation is another episode, y'all. But like women have to know and be honest and truthful about what they want when it comes to the sex. Am I using this as a tool to get closer to you or am I okay with just busting? If I'm emotionally attached to sex and I know I can't separate that because in the past I've gone crazy for, you know, I'm talking for women. In the past I've gone crazy because maybe I went there with men and now I had expectations. Am I likely to repeat that pattern and potentially screw this up? 
because mm-hmm. once you see that or once I sabotage this relationship based on that, I'm going to lose you. So am I going to do something differently this time? And if I put that power on sex, should I be giving it away knowing what it means to me? That's just the thing that they need to ask. What does this mean to me? Because it may not mm-hmm. mean the same thing to me that it means to you. So we need to have the same intentions on what it means. That's all I'm, that's all I'm advising. I think it's that simple. Yeah. If, you, if you're having sex to uh, think it's going to win you something or it's going to get you a goal, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. But if you're wrong doing reason. it because you wanted to do it, like, you right. know, I'm having a good time. Let's do this. Then it's always the right thing. But if you're going, yeah. hmm, I really don't want to, but I think he wants to. And I think this will make him like me more. You already going down the wrong yeah. path if you're thinking like that. Set, so I think it's set up right there. On the flip side to that coin, though, I hate when women, when I'm in a situation and women do it based on perception. Well, I don't know if I should do this because I don't, I, you know, usually I wait this long, but I really want to like, don't, that's, that's, I'm not a kid. You know no, what I'm saying? Thank you. No, I don't like that either. So I don't think that you should operate on societal expectations either. Like whatever makes you comfortable. If you're not comfortable doing it, we don't got to do it. I, right. I, I, we don't got to do this. You know what I'm saying? We trash anyway. Right. If you ain't trash, <laughs> right. 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 I don't want to do it. If you want to like, 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 why are we even do this? Why are we even <laughs> doing this? I feel like you guys have really, really helped the ladies out today. I know I got like several successful men in here that need to get back to work but like i'm gonna bring you guys all on for of course like more episodes because the insight that you're giving us like we need to hear your guys's thoughts because these are the conversations and the questions we're not talking to our partners about in that courtship process or they're just the men that we're dating like we're not talking to them we're not being honest and it's vice versa men aren't necessarily being honest with us as well even though you guys may say Mm -hmm. you know we need to become better listeners you guys also have to work on becoming better communicators and expressing yourself more so it works two ways but you guys clearly are you guys do this for a living all of you guys express yourselves very well so that's why i had to have some men who would open and share can you please go around and let everybody know where they can find you at so that if women want to ask more questions slide through your dms possibly you know i'm all about the love connections um hit you up maybe you liked you know one of the things that fella said and you want to talk about it over coffee with him um (laughs) i don't drink coffee and oh my god <laughs> let me help the ladies flirt okay uh take head take head for uh, what do you eat head what do you drink head just you don't even water drink alcohol. i don't drink alcohol i don't drink coffee the head is a cheap date lady so that's there you go right there um she's not paying anyway she gonna make nah. some water her treat water <laughs> get him some spark i don't let women buy me nothing there you go i think you just got you a date then right she there expect just me to put head. out <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? I love you guys. Oh my God. Okay, Jado, let us know where to find you. Oh man, that was hilarious. All right, first of all, you can find me at J D O E at Jado on everything. Um except for Facebook because then it's uh Jado Smith. So yeah. Okay, thanks, Jado. Damage, let the ladies know. Let the if fellas might have questions too. Don't be surprised because men listen also. No, don't be sending no dudes to my DM. No, but men have questions. Come on, no, no one when it's my introduction, <laughs> you say fellas too. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys do that. No, no, they don't. They Damn can ask it. you. Hey, can man, ask a relationship listen. specialist. If fellas have questions, hey, listen, ask we not a this is a judgment free okay. zone, damage. No, but first off, I was just saying because men fellas have questions too. also. Men hit me up all the time. So I was just saying fellas Keep hitting can, her. Fellas, great advice, but damage only wants the ladies. So <laughs> damage, yeah. where can they find you at? Yeah, you can hit me on Instagram at the real DJ Damage. And also I have a relationship podcast called Dualities Podcast. So y'all can check that out on all the streaming platforms, the Dualities Podcast. And make sure you listen to the episode I was on on there. Love yes. that podcast. <laughs> Head, where can they find you? DJ HED on everything. And Isaac Keys. That's it. Isaac Keys across the board. Okay. And you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at Spicy Madi. Make sure that you click and subscribe. Share this episode with a friend. Please tag that friend that you know needs to hear this. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.